Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week um, for you to watch at your convenience, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please share with um, everywhere and anywhere uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. For those of you not from Nebraska, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries here in Nebraska. So in your state, it may be the so-and-so state library. Um, so we provide services to all types of libraries. So we will have um, topics um, on our show that are for all types of libraries. So you will find things for publics, K-12, academic, schools, universities, uh, corrections, museums, archives. Basically, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Um, we do uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of services and products sometimes, um, it, uh, all across the board. Uh, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come in sometimes to do presentations about services and programs we're running through the Library Commission, but we bring, it, ah, we bring in guest speakers from across Nebraska and across the country sometimes, and that's what we have today. With us this morning is Laura Jones. Good morning, Laura. Good morning. And she is from the Indiana State Library. And um, she is going to talk to us about some awesome, cheap, free, hopefully, <laughs> ways to fill your shelves, <clears throat> excuse me, without draining your budget. So um, I'll hand it over to you, Laura, to take it away. Tell us all about how we can do this. All right. Thank you so much, Krista. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. I'm Laura Jones, and I'm going to talk to you, like Krista said, about some great resources and ways that you can fill your library shelves without draining your collection budgets. And here's a link and QR code. I made a wakelet board. I curated all the websites and resources that I'm going to talk about or mention today. There's going to be a ton of websites and resources so I don't want you to feel like you need to cram and write them down. After the show all attendees will receive the slides and also a PDF with all the resources so please don't feel like you have to rush to get everything down. First I want to introduce myself a little so you know a little bit more about my background even though most people just refer to me as that free book lady after hearing this presentation and that's fine too I'll answer to that. Um, I'm currently the Northwest Regional Librarian Coordinator for the Indiana State Library. And with that, I have 62 public libraries that I'm a liaison with uh, for the state library. I visit the libraries and help them with training needs and questions. Previously, I was a K-12 school librarian for five years and a public librarian prior to that. I am also serving as the past chair of the Indiana High School Book Award Elliott Rosewater Committee. And I'm thankful to be reviewing titles for School Library Journal and Library Journal, which I've been doing since 2017. I post my book reviews and other things on my blog at librarianlaura.com. And I'm also very active on Bookstagram and Twitter and Goodreads. So a little bit about how this presentation came about. Over the period of about four years in my role as the school librarian, I received and donated over 2,100 titles worth $31,000 to my school library. The titles all came to me free of charge through contests, giveaways, um, giving book reviews in exchange for titles. And I'm going to tell you about how I got started and give you a wealth of resources for how you can get free books for your own collections. And you can do this on a small scale and just use a few of the resources, of course, or you can go all out and sign up for everything kind of like I did. Uh, mm -hmm. It just depends on how much time you want to devote to the, to this. And I'm not an expert on any of these things, but I am happy to share with you my own experience um, so let's begin. So how did I become known as Free Book Lady? Well, it all started with a few book reviews and a blog. I started reviewing on a blog many years ago, and I started out with Blogger because it's the only one I had used before. I used it in my library master's courses. So I started doing a blog for fun and just to provide friends and family with book reviews because I was reading and talking about them anyway, so I might as well 
put them out there. And then I started getting some free books sent to me and post, then I started posting more frequently and spending a little more time on the platform and developing it. I didn't really know much about blogging at all. So I kind of taught myself through YouTube videos and Googling a lot of questions in order to figure out how to use categories, tags, widgets, all that good stuff. That's right. And then once I blogger, that was a, so easy to use back then. <laughs> yes, it was. In the beginning. Then I, um, yeah. Then I started to look at other avenues for getting free books, and um, I've compiled those together today with, to share with you. So after I go through all the resources, I'm also going to give you just a few tips for starting a blog if you um, wanted to start your own blog to do book reviews. All right, so first I'm going to go through a number of web pages and links that are all listed um, in the resource list I'm going to share. So don't worry about trying to write them down unless you really want to. Um, <laughs> first, I do a ton of contests and giveaway entries. Um, these can be found in abundance in social media, especially Instagram, so the Bookstagram world, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, what I have done is follow authors, publishers, illustrators, and also other book bloggers because the giveaways are in abundance. And oftentimes all you need to do is retweet a post or um, share a post in your story or something like that. And as an example of some of the things I've won in the past, um, I once retweeted a post by an author, Brooks, Brooks Benjamin, a middle grade author. And it, by doing that, I won five signed hardcovers, book swag, and then an author visit for my students when I was a school librarian. So nice. the sixth grade was pretty excited about that. <laughs> um, I once just used a hashtag, hashtag child of books with a photo of a book that made a difference in my life and the publisher sent me a whole gift basket of books and swag. So like I said, it's usually just as easy as retweeting something or using a certain hashtag and you can win lots of goodies. Um, an example of Facebook is just commenting on a post by an author who was um, giving away signed uh, arcs of her forthcoming novel. And authors and publishers and illustrators do a lot of promo giveaways around the time of publication of their new books. So if you're um, interested in any authors, I would suggest following them on their social media and watching out for giveaways from authors and publishers. So another website is called Bookster. Um, on Bookster, the giveaways change each month, but you can enter all of them if you want. Uh, also on Bookster, you can keep a list of what you have read and what you would like to read. You can attach your blog and you can get followers on Bookster. It's similar to Goodreads, um, though not as um, widely used, and I prefer Goodreads overall. <laughs> um, the next one is the Shelf Awareness Newsletter. So the link uh, to the newsletter will be shared with you, but I highly recommend signing up for this newsletter. It's chock full of contests and giveaways directly from publishers. Um, it includes books for all age groups and genres. And in a later slide, I'll show you some examples of things that I've won from that newsletter. And then Goodreads. Goodreads has thousands of book giveaway contests, um, early and finished copies. You can enter as many as you like. You can sort them by most popular, ending soon, recently added giveaways. You can also sort them by certain publishers or authors. And then any book that you have on your to be read list, um, you can get a notification anytime that book is up for a giveaway. So that's handy because they'll send you an email and it'll just say a book on your to be read list is having a giveaway. And then you can just click the link and enter the giveaway. So they make it easy for you. Um, next is Book Riot. This is an editorial book site that includes podcasts, newsletters, giveaways in all genres, children's, teens, and adults, and they have nine or ten giveaways listed at a time on their website. BookBub. This is similar to Goodreads as well. There are recommendations and lists for books, but they also have contests and then amazing ebook deals. And then Book Page or Read It Forward is another um, newsletter that you can sign up for, and they. Um, give out so many early copies free to contest winners. So Read It Forward is another one to check out. And then Book Page. Book Page has usually got one contest and one sweepstakes that update every month. And the contests are great because I won one a few years ago when I worked in the public library and the winning box was five hardcover books. Um, and all you have to do to enter their contest or their sweepstakes is usually comment on their contest post. And then they also have great newsletters, content, uh, readers advisory newsletters for librarians, which are free to sign up for. And then lastly, Book Sweeps has contests and giveaways, and then free eBooks that are all sorted by genre for easy browsing. So 
I myself am a romance book lover and very proud of it. And I would go to book sweeps and just sort for romance books and then enter those contests to make it easier. More contests and giveaways. So these are all sites that are more young adult, YA focused. Um, many of these are just created by the publishers specifically to get their books into the hands of readers. The first is Underlined, and this was also once called First in Line, and it's through Penguin Random House. They allow readers to get early access to their um, ARCs. They provide chapter samplers, deleted scenes, cover reveals, lots of swag and contests and giveaways. They also provide VIP invites to their events with authors, and on numerous occasions I've received boxes of um, finished books from First in Line when they just want to get their books out to readers and librarians. Novel, N-O-V-L, this is through Little Brown Books. They actually have a seasonal galley or ARC request form that bloggers and librarians can sign up for on their website. And you can choose kind of what books you're interested in and if they think you're a good fit, they'll send you those books for free to review. They also do a monthly novel box giveaway. And this box is curated by a different author each month and it has um, the, that author's signed book and then a couple other signed books and then a whole bunch of book swag that's uh, picked out by that author. And I won the September novel box a few years back um, through the Twitter giveaway. So I'll show you a picture of that in a forthcoming slide so you can kind of see what's in it. Riveted is through Simon & Schuster and on their site you can read full books online for free, like early books, and they also have two or three giveaways a month. Epic Reads is through HarperCollins. They usually have four to five giveaways a month on their site and they also have a great young adult author database with all the current tour information, which likely most of those are um, online tours now, but still, still tours. And then Fire Reads is through Sourcebooks. They have a reviewer sign up on their site and also a one-time title request form. So if there's a Sourcebooks um, book that you wanna read, you can go and just request it through their form and let them know you're a librarian or library employee or blogger, whatever. Um, they also have giveaways, excerpts, newsletters, and behind the scenes interviews on their website. And then are there any fellow teachers here with me? Um, maybe you've heard of teachingbooks.net. Um, they have a, amazing resources for teachers, but they also have five or six book contests each month and their prizes are wonderful. I've won quite a few of their um, prize packs and use them in my library classroom. So they actually have a specific page on their website devoted to their monthly contests. All right, so this next slide um, are books where you complete reviews or complete kind of what you think about the book in exchange for getting the book for free. So book, yeah, this one's hard to say, book perk page turners. This is through HarperCollins. They send you little small surveys about a book and your interests. So they might send you a survey that shows two separate book covers and say, which one do you like better? Or they'll give you like a quick synopsis of a book and then say, if you had to choose which title do you like better, stuff like that, where you can kind of help influence their decisions, which is kind of fun. And um, you receive free books in exchange for filling out the surveys. Well, most times they send you an ebook link, um, but I'm excited to see kind of where they go with this because this one's a fairly new uh, program through HarperCollins. And then Book Sirens, this is where you can connect your Goodreads account and then you receive an email with free um, early galleys that are digital early um, galleys to read and review and then you can um, report back with your review th from the link provided kind of like goodreads but the more you review back they'll send you more free arcs and bookish first this is probably my favorite of late um, because they have really upped their game so to speak and added a lot more book options on their site so bookish first is free to sign up for anyone you don't have to be a librarian our library employee, but um, what you do is you read their little book excerpt and you give your first impression, which is a very quick feedback. Um, it's not like a huge review, it's just like, would you wanna read this book and why? I mean, do the characters sound enticing, yada, yada. So um, once you give the feedback, you get points. And as you um, get more and more points on your account, you can use those points to cash in and get free books. But each time you give feedback on a book, you can sign up to be uh, one of the winners for that book. And then they give away, you know, so many copies of each book that they feature on their account. And every month they add quite a few books and you can give first impressions reviews to any of the books they feature and also be um, signed up to win them. 
Um, you also get additional points if you share your first impression or your review on your Goodreads, your Amazon, your blog. Anywhere you share it, you can add your link on their site and then you'll get more points. So when you get 500, you get 500 points additionally when you first sign up and then you get 100 points for each time you say, I like this book or I don't like this book or I want to read this book. Then you get 100 points for each review you post and give them the link for. So it really doesn't take that long to get a lot of points added up and when you get to 2,000 points that's when you can choose any of the books they have offered and they'll mail you a finished copy. So it's really fun and I suggest trying to sign up for that one quickly. Um, Penguin Re Random House Reader Rewards, this is one of my other favorites um, and this was formerly known as First to Read. It's a book love or loyalty program. What you do is you can enter the proof of purchase for any Penguin book that you've purchased. It doesn't have to be purchased through Penguin. You can you, you could have got it through your book of the month subscription. You could get it through Amazon. You could get it anywhere. As long as you have your proof of purchase, you just take a photo of your receipt or a snapshot of your book of the month um, screen. And then you get points for each time you purchase a Penguin product, 10 points for, book, for each book. Once you get to 120 points, you can choose any book on their website. And you know, Penguin's a huge publisher. Any book on their website, up to $30. So this is an, an awesome way to get books. I purchase a lot of books as gifts in um, random act of kindness gifts on Bookstagram. So I always purchase Penguin books for gifts and then I go um, use my points and get my own free books for purchasing the gifts. So that's a win-win right there. And it's free for anybody to sign up as well. That's something that I was wondering about here. A lot of these, I mean, we are attending here right now, I assume mostly for, um, like you tell your session said, so you don't, um, trying to get books for your library so you don't break your book budget. But these, almost all of these, just anybody can sign up or um, participate in those contests as well too, right? It, it's not required that you're you know, gonna get the, the prize or the books for a library. Correct. Yep. Most of them are anybody and everybody can sign up. Yep. Nice. For those of us that have our own little obsession and <laughs> yeah. but it's kind of like you said, that's kind of great. You can get something for yourself and then it, it rolls over and benefits with the points for that, that um, Penguin one to um, the library too. So everybody. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So here's just a couple examples that I mentioned earlier. Just wanted to show you um, the novel box on the left there. That's um, the novel box that, box that I won. It was curated by Dawn Kurt. Kurtigich, I'm not sure I'm saying her name right, but she wrote The Dead House and, and The Trees Crept In. So um, two of her books came signed and then two other books from other authors came signed and then a bunch of random book swag. We all love the book swag, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second picture, that's our uh, picture of my sixth graders doing their Skype visit with Brooks Benjamin. And so I gave away, he, he sent a box of swag with the signed hardcovers. So I raffled off the hardcovers um, and then gave away the bookmarks and the swag, and they were pretty excited about talking to him in their English class. Mm -hmm. All right, so these are some more resources where you can give your thoughts and get free books. Um, My Reader Rewards Club, this is through Tyndale House Publishers. Um, there's not a huge selection of, of items to choose from, but they are updated with new titles monthly. Um, and these include things like not just fiction or nonfiction, but like um, fun things like coloring books. Like one month they sent a coloring book to review. And then I, I received an email that they were publishing some colorable stickers. And because I had once reviewed a coloring book, they were just going to send me those stickers and see what I thought about that. So I thought that was cool. Um, their website's easy to navigate and keep track of your past reviews and the titles that you um, order. You get points on this as well, and then you can order your free titles. Um, the Reader's Lounge at Page Chasers. This is a monthly sweepstakes um, website, and they're mostly Christian fiction and nonfiction. And you can choose one title at a time. And once you get the title, you review it. And then as soon as you submit your review on their website, you can turn right around and re um, request another title that they have up for up for grabs. So they also have ebook deals on their website. Book Tasters, this is um, something I kind of ran across on Twitter. They, you can watch their Twitter feed and they'll feature a certain book. So if you wanna read one of the books they have on offer, you can send them a message and then you get the digital book straight from the author. Um, it's very organized. They also have monthly contests to make it like a game. 
the actual the owner of book tasters reached out to me when i asked about it and said they called they wanted to start as kind of a gamification so mm -hmm. um some of the titles you get are physical copies but it's mostly digital and um it's fairly new too so it might it's it's hopefully going to improve the way it, it's kind of set up and working but right now they just had it through their twitter feed um library thing you might have heard of this they um have a lot of um early review opportunities. You can receive an email each month with a new batch of review offerings, some are physical, some are eBooks. You can request whatever ones you wanna to try to win copies for. And they also have member giveaways to enter, which are updated each month. And then Baker Book Bloggers, this is a Christian fiction and nonfiction publisher. Um, mm -hmm. Once you sign up, you'll get a monthly newsletter with books being offered for review. You can receive any that you're willing to review and then you just share your review back with a link they provide and they're not looking for huge reviews most of the time they just want to know a quick um, succinct review what you think about the book and then you receive the physical copies in the mail to keep not ebooks which is rare these days <laughs> um we do have a question um sure. actually about um arcs and I'm not sure if there is a rule about this, but a question there wants to know, can you put ARCs in your public library collection since they're not what the book might look like in the end? Yeah, I'm going to go over ARCs pretty soon, but I, I would say no, because they're not actual the final um, book. It doesn't have the final cover, the final pictures. Right. Um, many times some of the text is changed and the ISBN is not registered. Um, so yeah. That would be I, that's a, I'm going to talk about arcs. Yeah. Yep. I know what some people do, and oh. some libraries, uh, librarians I've heard do with them, they use them as giveaways or prizes for yes. something, for um, either a raffle or a, some reading prize or something. And they don't go in the, and, they, and they, you know, make it very clear that this is an arc, this is prepub. Something yep. might not be, might be different, but that it can be used in that way. Yeah. Yep. That's a perfect way to use them. Yep. All right, so awesome. next, this is just a couple of quick um, websites I want to mention in case you have kids or students that want to review books and get free books. Um, Penguin has their rookie reviewer program. So kids have to fill out a consent form, of course, that needs to be signed or um, approved by a guardian or parent. And then once it's sent in, they can receive free books. Um, usually, I think they, my friend signed her son up and she got two or three books at a time. And then they just ask the kid to give quick feedback um, through a link, what they think about the books, and then you can request more. So that's fun for kids to do and kind of see their reviews being used by the publisher. And one of the reviews my student or my friend's son did actually was featured in their newsletter um, later on. And I sent him an email that said, hey, there's your review. And it just said his first name, um, but it was really cool. And then Do Dojo Books, um, this is a, a very, um, hefty website very uh, lots of information on it but there's kids books giveaways and contests from publishers and it's geared specifically for kids so that's a great way if you have interested students or library patrons who want to get involved and then this is kind of a newer thing that i um, added to my presentation just because i found out about this very recently but book swapping platforms i love a good old-fashioned book swap um, and I used to do them in the school but um, now they have these amazing virtual book swapping platforms so two of them have been around for quite a while book mooch has been around for quite a while and you can list the books you want to swap and then you get an email or a notification when someone requests one of your books that you have each time you send a book out to someone you get a credit and then that credit allows you to choose any book you want to receive from someone else. So um, you go in there and you kind of make a wish list of which books you want. And then when one's available, they'll notify you, hey, you want to get this book? And then you request to swap that book and that person sends the book to you. So mm -hmm. Bookmooch is one that's been around a while. Along with Bookmooch is Paperback Swap. They're similar to Bookmooch, although their website is a little bit um, hard to use because they have all these ads all over the place. Um, so it's kind of hard to see what you're doing and find um, the area that you're trying to look at. Um, however, they do allow swapping of hardcover books, audiobooks, and textbooks, even though they're called paperback swap. Um, but it's similar to Bookmooch in the fact that you can make a wish list of what you want, and then you can also list like, here's what I have available, and then people request what they want to swap. 
And that's done on a credit system as well. So, you know, you send a book, you receive a book. And then the newest platform that I have just recently started in 2021, I actually helped out with this a little bit, um, did some uh, kind of testing of their platform. Um, the owners contacted me and asked me, asked me as a bookstagrammer to kind of help them test it out. So the platform's similar to Bookmooch, but instead of a credit system, you keep a balance in your account. And that way, whenever there's a sh uh, book you want shipped, um, your funds are in there just to get the shipping. And they use like the media mail price, which is like usually under $3 a book. Um, and then this way, the person that's sending you the book doesn't have your address to send it to you. The company, the Swap Reads, actually does the shipping to you. They do the address. So um, it's very easy to use. And the way their website is organized, they also have this virtual guide that pops up and helps you navigate along to see, like, where do I go to list a book or where do I go to look for a book? So it's a great, um, a great way to use um, swapping platform and to kind of move some of your old books out or get some new books or if there's a certain book you're looking for and can't find it copy anywhere you never know you can put it on your wish list and see if someone has it available so these are fun to do if you like book swaps yeah um, we have a question um, actually yeah. I think it's from the previous slide um, the, uh, that we were talking about penguin uh, the penguin one on the previous um, so yes. what is the age is the penguin one for um Good question. I would say, I thought it was something maybe like seven and up, mm. because I don't, I don't think they do it for picture books. I think it's like middle grade, mm -hmm. middle grade and YA that they do. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another way to to receive books, and this, um, these are going to take a little bit more of your time, but um, I found this is a great way that I got books for my library when I was a school librarian. I started reviewing books for School Library Journal, and the way it had it worked was, you receive a review copy well in advance. You know, read it, submit your review, and then when that book is published, you get the final uh, finished copy as a thank you, so that you keep that kind of as your payment for the review. Um, so I always put those in the collection because I always reviewed YA books for School Library Journal, and then Library Journal, um, same kind of thing. You receive a early copy, review it, then you get a finished copy. Um, when it when it's published so those are great ways to get some books if and especially if you want your reviews published which I, I thought that was really fun um, other review places could be book list um, you actually receive a fee a nominal um, fee per review printed so they, they pay you a little bit um, if you have a review that's printed and they even pay you a little bit if you have a review that's rejected on book list so if you're looking to get um, some funds from your reviews you can check out book list and then there's also Voya. I signed up with Voya, but I found that they were very, very particular with the wording of the reviews, um, more so than even school library and library journals. So I decided not to uh, review for them, but uh, they do send you review copies and you can keep them. So that's another avenue. Um, and then the links here go to their websites and provide information about how to sign up as a reviewer. It takes a little digging to find on their sites, but I've already kind of done that digging for you. So if you're interested, um, most, most of the time you just send your resume and a couple writing samples, usually reviews that you've already done. And then just a tip if you're going to sign up is to make sure and look at their publication first so you can kind of match your review to their specific style when you send your application because they vary greatly from one platform to another and they all have word limits. Um, specifically, uh, they like very are very particular about how you phrase like your um, review and things like that. Um, but I find it, found it and still find it very rewarding to review books and, and then receiving the book in the mail and then showing, seeing your name in print is, is really cool with the review. Um, and the there free books are about great. rules for reviews, but I, as I, when I worked in a university library, I remember reading book reviews <clears throat> and I can see why that would be a thing to, to, um, cause it was very easy to read every single review from different books and they all kind of told you the same thing in a short bit and yes. they covered the same parts. So you could very quickly like compare and contrast because they all mentioned and described the book or reviewed the book in the same way, in the same format. I never really thought about that being something that they, dictated to the actual reviewers. Hmm. Yeah, but I get that yep. it helps out when you're on the other end and reading these reviews to try and decide what to buy, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. One example is just the, I know from experience from school, library journal and library journal, after your like 250 words, 
um, you always have to include a little sentence that says verdict in capital letters and that's kind of like a one sentence should right. you buy this book or not and so that's how they do all theirs and I really liked I got kind of so I was used to what am I going to put for my verdict and that's what I think about while I was reading the book so what's yeah. my final decision on this top title <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then um, I mentioned that um, uh, Indiana has a state book award committees. And, I, and if you're in, I'm sure many of you are from other states and most of you probably have state book award committees in your state. And I encourage you to check those out. Um, I have been on the Indiana High School Book Award Committee for uh, I think six years now, the Elliott Rosewater Book Award Committee. And being on that committee has a lot of work, but it's very rewarding. Um, we help choose the award nominees each year. There's 25 books that are nominated for the award. And then um, we get the books from the publishers sent to us so that we can read them through and rate them and figure out who's going to be the final 25 books. Um, so you get to keep those books for your library, which is really nice. And then a lot of times the publishers send you extra copies to consider for the next year's list. Um, so I got a lot of amazing books this way for my high school kids. And then Indiana also has, you know, a um, read aloud committee and a Young Hoosier Book Award. So they have them for all age levels, but I was involved specifically with the young adult and high school books. We have that here in Nebraska, we have our, um, the Golden Sower Award is the oh. um, youth, uh, well, the, the kids actually choose the, to the, the winners of that. Um, so it's a youth uh, selected award from the, from the children in the schools. And we okay. also do read yeah, that, uh, The Rosie Award, I should have Go clarified ahead. that. The kids vote and choose the actual winners, but the librarians kind of find all the nominees. <laughs> Right. Yes. Yes. We the librarians pick who, who are going to be the um, the contestants, the nominees, and then the kids read and um, vote on them. Yeah. 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 So those are great ways to get involved and also um, network with other librarians and teachers. And yeah, it's it's very fun to to serve on one of those committees. A lot of work, but very fun. And yeah. And books. in Nebraska, we have our book awards are done through the Nebraska Center for the Book, which I know. Oh. Um, other it's that's a uh, center for the book is something that each state may have their, their own center for the book uh and that's where our one book when nebraska comes through there as well um so that would be another thing to look into if you have a some your, your state's center for the book they're always looking for people for nominations for the titles and then people to be on the committees to review them and then decide who are going to be the winners or the the ones that people vote on if you're doing like a and we do a statewide, you know, one book, one Nebraska, and you can vote on what's going to be the new, the next book and everything. Yeah. Yep. Great ideas. Yes. All right. So my next slide, this one talks about publishers newsletters. So if you don't like to receive a lot of emails or you get annoyed by newsletters, this may not be for you. But for me, this is very lucrative as far as getting books because publishers and author newsletters have so many of these little clickable links in them where you literally just click and then fill out your info and they'll send you the book to review so um, most of the times there are arcs but a lot of times if they're contests you can get um, finished copies but these are just some examples of things that i've clicked and and received um, you can see the marissa meyer one down here at the bottom is a sweepstakes but in this case this was a um, uh, I think it was called monogamy, maybe. Anyway, you can request a copy of the book. And then um, over here is a giveaway, and this is request an ARC, and they actually sent you both books to, to look over. Um, so newsletters are a great place to find free books and contests. And there's a website called Early Word, and Early Word has curated a list of all the publishers and all their imprints and all their library marketing contact people um, they're separated out into an adult list and a children's list, and I've included both links in your resources. This is extremely helpful if you have a book you want to receive early to review or make a purchasing decision. You can look up the publisher and then find out at who at the publishing company to send an email to and request that title from. Um, there's also links to sign up for each of their newsletters on the Early Word website. And then, like I said, newsletters are a great place for giveaways and contests specifically for librarians. Early Word um, is, is uh, also has their own contests occasionally kind of in little sidebars like these little boxes with books featured too where you can sign up to win. 
Um, and then as you request and review books, some publishers might invite you to be on their standing galley list to receive the titles either monthly, quarterly, or for special mailings. Um, some examples of that are what I was subscribed to when I was a school librarian. Um, I was on the Macmill Macmillan um, children's list for standing galleys, so they would send me a, a box of books every month. Um, they would send me like an email and say, which ones do you want to review? And then they would send me the actual finished books. And then um, I was also on the Penguin Random House Young Readers standing galley list, and they would send a quarterly um, email with a whole list of books, and then you choose whichever ones you want. And then every quarter you'd get the boxes as they published, um, the books as they published in boxes, and you'd get one of each copy you requested, but they were finished copies. So I would read those and then put those in the collection because those weren't were not ARCs. So that was a great way to get lots of books for my collection. Um, and then in a newsletter, just as an example, I responded to a newsletter from Candlewick Publishing um, because they said anybody that responds can get a free box set of Judy Moody books. So it was like Judy Moody's anniversary. And all you had to do was write back to the newsletter and say, hey, I want a Judy Moody box. And then they sent me a free box set. I believe there were like 10 or 12 books in the set for free that I put in my collection. Mm -hmm. So it's just an example to watch the newsletters. They are a great source of free books. All right, so how does this help my library? These are a couple of what I like to call my book haul photos. Um, some people call book haul when they go to the used bookstore. I'm guilty of that too, but these are free, so that's even better. Um, so this is kind of what happened when I left for summer break. When I was a school librarian, I would come back and open all the boxes, and um, this is what I would end up with. Um, so the top one's just from a summer break, two-month break, and the bottom one's from the 2016 two-month break. Um, so obviously the, a lot of these books are galleys, but there are, are quite a few that are finished copies that I could put in the collection. And then I'll talk about what, what to do with the galleys and the arcs, um, but the students really liked having those as well. Along with the obvious benefits of the free materials, these are great ways to network with publishers and authors. Get your name out there. Um, if they know you're interested in, for instance, a Harlan Coben book, maybe they have another mystery author that comes out and they're like, oh, she wanted the Harlan Coben book. Maybe we'll ask her about this, uh, this other mystery author and send her one of those. That happens quite frequently when they send mailings. Um, and then it's a great way to receive advanced knowledge of forthcoming titles to add to your collection. And just to um, sum it up, I was a school librarian for five and a half years at, at the school with a very limited book budget. I'm talking like $1,000 a year for books for K to 12. So I pretty much could buy the re, um, the awards books and then I'd be, my budget would be gone for the year. Um, for four of those years, I signed up for like as many contests and giveaways as I could and did tons and tons of reviews. And then I was on the standing galley list for Penguin and Macmillan. And I kept a spreadsheet of what I received and donated to the library um, just for kind of information sake. And I'm glad I did now because looking back, there's quite a lot of books. Um, I received over 2,140 books and they were worth over $31,000. So I gave that all to wow. the library. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. so my budget of $1,000, <laughs> little pennies, but the kids mm -hmm. were like overjoyed to have new books all the time. So I just kept entering contests and getting books. <laughs> And that's All a good right, thing so, that someone's wondering, yeah, how do you, yeah, you said the spreadsheet, keeping track, there's so many different contests and things, yeah, that yeah. that can, I'm sure you could be buried in, where did I get this one from, which, and also which ones, which contests or giveaways were easiest for you, most successful, um, you know, keeping track of that, yeah, is definitely be, uh, could be overwhelming. Yeah. Yep. And then I kind of like just made a report and submitted it to my principal and superintendent. I'm like, hey, you guys only give me this much on a budget, but here's what I'm doing to get books for the library. So just to kind of let them know that, hey, our library's got lots of books because of this and and they appreciated that too. So yeah. it was it was good. Um, now I'm gonna switch gears just to smidge and explain how to get a hold of ARCs and digital ARCs and then finally talk about a little bit of tips for book review and receiving free books. So ARCs, the magical ARC, the advanced reader copy, these are like um, getting more and more rare, the physical ARCs because of our great friend, the pandemic. Um, 
publishers are having trouble printing a lot because you know most people are a lot of people are telecommuting now and a lot of um, their warehouses are not staffed like they used to be um, but they're still sending some but um, arcs like i said earlier should not be added to a circulating collection because they're unpublished proof copies but they do make great prizes for patrons a lot of libraries leave arcs in their staff lounge for staff to read and keep up with upcoming titles or you could leave them in little free libraries for others to enjoy. I'm guilty of that. I drive around to the three or four in the varying counties around me and leave them quite frequently. Um, you can swap them for other ARCs through the Goodreads ARC swap group, or um, you can give contests. If you have a Twitter or a bookstagram, you can give them away in like a flash giveaway if you'd like. Um, but they're mainly used as marketing tools and they're in limited supply. Um, publishers also call them galleys and you're not supposed to quote directly from them if you review them because some of the text may change by the time they go to publication. Um, so how to get ARCs. So I'm going to show you um, how to get access to the digital ARCs and to get access to audiobook, early audiobooks. And then we've been talking about how to get access to physical ARCs and all the various contests and giveaways and publisher newsletters. Um, but you can also do blog tours. If you have a blog, I do a lot of blog tours where um, PR companies will send you the book, you'll read it, put it on your blog, and then you get to keep the book and oftentimes swag that goes along with it as a thank you for doing that. Um, and then you're not allowed to resell the ARCs, of course. Um, and if you receive an ARC from a publisher, whether it's digital or physical, remember to thank that publisher and link to the um, publisher or the author in your review thanking them for the ARC and letting them know that you received a review copy in exchange for an honest review. So digital ARCs, um, DRCs, many of you might know about Edelweiss and NetGalley because these are kind of the main ways that librarians and library employees get early copies to review. Um, they're known as eGalleys, digital editions, DRCs. Um, but what's the benefit of getting these early digital copies. Well, if you have a staff who reviews books for your library's website or blog, uh, it's a great way to review the upcoming titles to create excitement among your patrons. Um, also, you can get them early to make decisions on whether you want to order that book for collection development purposes. And you can see what's coming up in the publishing world and read it to find out um, kind of which direction you want to go with your purchasing. Edelweiss is um, the one that I used longest and you can submit your reviews on Edelweiss directly to the publisher and nominate it for library reads. So Edelweiss shows like all the books that are going to be published by date and it's updated usually on Tuesdays. Tuesdays are pub day but they put a lot more titles on each Tuesday and you can sort them by publisher, you can sort them by um, catalogs from publishers, you can sort by um, publication date, virtually sort by anything to find titles. And then if you want to download the title, you can just click request. And a lot of times if you request books from a certain publisher, they'll whitelist you so that once you log into Edelweiss, you don't have to click request and wait for them to notify you if you can read that book. It'll just say download title. And that means you've been whitelisted, which is a good thing because then you don't have to wait to get your early book. You just download that thing. Um, so once a book has passed its publication date, though, it'll be removed or expired from your device. Um, so like I downloaded the Ellen Hildebrand Golden Girl book the other day. It comes out in June. So um, once I get it read, I got to get it read before the pub date, of course, um, so I can review it. But once the pub date happens, it'll be removed from my device. So don't want to miss out on that book. Um, Edelweiss has also started adding early audiobook copies to their offerings. Um, and Edelweiss is free for librarians and library workers and booksellers and teachers. Anyone can get a free account and then, well, anyone in those fields can get a free account and then you can start requesting books. Um, NetGalley is very similar to Edelweiss. Um, I find their interface a little easier to use. It looks less um, bookseller-ish. I don't know how to put that, but if you go into both websites, you'll see what I'm talking about. NetGalley is just so much easier to use. They show you the book title um, and it's just a lot more pleasing to the eye, easy to use. Um, but once you download a book from NetGalley, the best part is it doesn't like go away. It doesn't leave after the pub date. So I prefer getting books through NetGalley now that I found that out. 
because if you don't get to the book in time of publication, you can still read it and do your review, you know, a month or so afterwards. Um, but you can review books on NetGalley, and once you review a book, your your rating goes up. Um, your rating is based on how many books you download versus how many books you send your reviews in for. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. Edelweiss doesn't have that sort of tracking system yet, but NetGalley does. So if you download a book and don't get it read and then never review it, your um, rating will, will be lower. So just keep that in mind. And then if your rating's higher, you'll likely be approved for more free book copies. And then NetGalley has recently added early audiobooks as well. So those are great places to go to get early ebooks. And like I said, new book announcements and review copies usually come out on Tuesdays, which are pub day. Um, you can keep track of which books you want to read by placing a little tag on them, like highly anticipating, anticipating, or you can keep track of what you're currently reading on there as well, kind of like Goodreads. And then audiobooks. This is one of my favorite resources to provide to librarians as well, because um, these are both easy to use. And if you are into audiobooks, or even if you're not into audiobooks, you will be after I tell you these, these uh, websites, I think. Um, Libro FM is a great way to get new and forthcoming audiobooks for purchase and review consideration. Um, anyone that's a librarian, book review educator, uh, bookseller can download three audiobooks a month using a link um, that they provide you. You sign up for their audiobook listening copy program, their ALC program. And then once you have access to that program, they'll email you with a link each, each month and say, request your ALCs. So um, when you go in there, you just choose three audiobooks from their titles. And then after you download them, they're yours to keep. They have a fancy, cool app, Libro FM app, where you can just uh, listen to the audiobooks right from their app. And I love Libro FM. I listen to audiobooks almost anytime I drive anywhere, and they're great. Um, volumes is through Penguin Random House, and they're newer, um, but they offer a ton of, of new books and very popular books, like bestsellers um, as audio options. And to get signed up for volumes, it takes a little bit longer because um, you have to fill out a form and then wait for them to flip the magic switch so that you can download their audiobooks for free in the app. Um, but once you have their app, you can see there's a section that says audiobooks for review, and that's where you'll go to get any of those books you want for free. And then with both Libro FM and Volumes, once you download the audiobook, um, they're yours to keep. So you don't have to like hurry and get it listened to by a certain time or anything like that. So I would highly suggest checking those out. And then like I said, NetGalley and Edelweiss um, both have audiobooks now. But I think since they're both trying to figure out how to um, make it work, they're, they're really hard to download. I haven't even been able to figure out how to download one yet on NetGalley. So I'm just um, using Libro FM and volumes until they kind of work out the kinks in their system. I love downloading early um, books from Edelweiss and NetGalley, but the audiobooks they're they're working on, and I'm sure they'll get the, all the kinks worked out. And then I mentioned Early Word um, earlier uh, as a way to get publishers contact information and also get publishers newsletter sign up information. Um, but another thing is, if you want a book, if you want to read a book early, you're a librarian or library employee, the publishers want to give you those books early and have you read them. You're like the perfect audience for them. So I used to be scared to ask. Well, there's really no reason to be scared to ask because what's the worst they're going to say? No? Okay, then try again. Um, but early words giving you the person to contact. So if you want a book from Gallery Press, they're giving you like, this is the person to send an email to and uh, ask them, please, if you could have an early copy to review. Um, if you don't find a certain publisher's contact info on the Early Word website, a lot of times you can go to the publisher's website and like scroll to the bottom and find an email address for like media inquiry or publicity requests, or some of them call it influencer um, information. So a lot of times they'll have um, information on how to request a review copy, or some of them even just have a form now where you fill out like, I'm Laura Jones from this library, and here's my blog, here's my bookstagram, and here's the book I want to receive, and then they'll just mail you the book. So it's always um, better to ask and be told no than not to ask and not know. So just make sure you say please and thank you, and make sure you um, send your review to the person who sent you the book after it's done, because that way they know that you you know, took the 
seriously and reviewed the book. And then just very quickly, there are a lot of blogging platforms that you can use. I mentioned I started with Blogger, oof, and then that's all I knew at the time. And then um, a good friend of mine said, why don't you try WordPress? So I switched to WordPress and did the um, free version for a while. And then, and then I switched over to uh, have my own uh, paid version. And it's easy to use and navigate. And there's a lot of options for design and layout, much more um, analytics and stats information than Blogger has. And then it's easy to link it to your social media platforms and then use auto posting across different platforms. So each time I post on WordPress, it goes to my Twitter and Facebook page, for instance. And the free version of that is really, it's very robust as well. It's, I mean, it's yes. a good way to get started on the WordPress free version. Yeah, it's not something you need, you need to pay for with the hosting and all, but, um, and, and the more support. So definitely if you're just getting started, just highly recommend that. And then if needed, if you get really into it and really busy, yeah, you probably would yep. want to bump up to it, but. Yeah, it's it's a great, great website. And there's so many um, helpful things you can find about WordPress to it, like in their um, FAQs and their user guides and all that. I did a lot of searching to figure things yeah, out. A lot of community support of it too, yeah. so yeah. Mm -hmm. And then other places, you don't have to have a blog if you're thinking, gosh, I don't have time to start a blog. Well, you don't have to start a blog. You can still um, post reviews without a blog. Um, you can put them on Goodreads. You can use Amazon Vine, um, although that's something where you have to kind of do Amazon reviews for a while, and then you get the personal invitation from Amazon to be a Vine reviewer. Um, so, you know, you can put them on Goodreads, Amazon, any type of social media, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, um, and then TikTok. Imagine that TikTok is becoming a place for book book videos and reels. I um, haven't entered the TikTok world, and I'm not going to because I've got too many other things going. So but I know it's being used for bookish content, and it's really quite quite cool. I'm sure they're making book dances as I speak right now on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> but the reels that people make with their books are are really cool. So these are just ways that you can you know. If a publisher sends you a book, don't worry if you don't have a blog. If you need to review it, just put it on Goodreads and send them the link or put it on Amazon, send them the link. That works too. Yeah. But if you do decide to start a book review blog, here's just a few quick, easy tips. Um, of course, pick your platform, um, attach your blog to all your social media outlets, let people know about it. Um, the more traffic you get on your blog is the higher uh, chance of free books you're going to get from publishers. Marketing um, yourself you, over and over again every time you do one, yeah. Yep, and every time you post, make sure you tag those authors and publishers and use hashtags that go along with um, the book and the content. Po try to post new content regularly. You can schedule those ahead. That saves me so much because I just schedule things on the weekend and then I have posts going out during the week when I'm busy with work. Um, and then make sure to interact and engage with people. So if someone comments on your blog post, you should comment back and interact with them. Um, and then you can add your reviews other places as well and um, put your blog link in there. You know, if you put it on Goodreads or Amazon, you can mention your, mm -hmm. your blog. So yes, market yourself is a huge help when you're trying to get free books. Mm -hmm. And then some review tips. Um, be wary of including your entire plot and your review. Try not to go past half of the story um, halfway point because that can be a spoiler in itself. Um, and just think about things that could be spoilers like, oh, the end of this book is so sad or, well, there's a huge <laughs> plot twist at the end. Some people find that to be a spoiler. I am guilty of that. I, I sometimes do that in my reviews and I, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't do that. So I just read somebody said, those are spoilers. I'm like, oh, they kind of are. But anyway, think about spoilers and try not to give them. Um, be specific about what you like and don't like about the book um, while also trying to remain neutral and objective um, with your own beliefs. Um, suggest similar titles and authors that remind you of this book. So, you know, if you like this book, try Ellen Hildebrand or this book reminded me of uh, Mary Kay Andrews' book, stuff, stuff like that. Um, you can organize your reviews into categories and then add a lot of tags so that people can find them. Um, Post, try to post your reviews a few days before the pub date of the book. If you're doing an early book, if you're not doing a, a forthcoming book, don't worry, just uh, post your review. But it's nice to post them around the pub date for maximum uh, traffic. And then cross-posting them on all your platforms. And then um, 
very important, I think, is to send a thank you and a link to your completed review to the very kind person who sent you that ARC or digital ARC. Um, and that way they'll know that you're serious and then that will up your chances to get sent more books. Um, we do have a question about reviewing since you're um, talking about this right now. Yes. Um, that's uh, convenient. Uh, do you keep a spreadsheet for your reviewing to keep track of all you read and where you post? You know, like you said, you're keeping track of where you get your books from. Something similar for all the reviews that you do? Yes, and um, I, I actually can share that if, if you email me. I have this spreadsheet that someone shared with me and it's like so nice. I used to just write them in my bullet journal, which my bullet journal is, is just a book journal. I don't do all that fancy bullet journal stuff, but I used to write them and like make myself a little, but now I um, just keep track of books by pub date and which ones I need to review a certain month and date. And then someone sent me a spreadsheet that has become a, a godsend because it shows like the number of pages, the pub date, when my reviews do, who sent me the book, all that good stuff. Um, so I can keep myself organized. <laughs> yeah, they said they would love to see it. Yes. Perfect. So whoever wants to see that, if you see my email on there, please send me an email. I'll be happy to send you that and you can like save it and, and use it. It's a Google Doc, I believe. And like, and that kind of goes into my next point. I am like extremely eager and um, willing to talk to anybody who has questions. I love to help people with this kind of thing because it's kind of my passion to, you know, books are my passion, obviously, but I love to help people. So feel free to email me. I would love to help you if you have questions on anything or need help getting started. Um, and then if you're on Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, YouTube, anywhere, I've got all my links so you can find me and, and we can talk books. So <laughs> please contact me. And thank you so much for listening today. I hope you learned some things and I hope the resources that I'm gonna send will be useful as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Um, no, I think this was great, Laura. Um, so many libraries are struggling with budgets just as usual. That's uh, unfortunately the norm, uh, it seems, across all types and sizes of libraries. Um, and some of our littlest ones too, like you said, a thousand dollar budget, if anything. Um, and even smaller sometimes, and what do you do to at least have something new and something for um, your community, whether it's a public library or school library. Uh, I think these are some great tips, and some of them I had heard of and have used myself. Um, library thing is one that I've been in, uh, Gap Net Galley, just my own personal, <laughs> not working in a library, uh, but so many that I had no idea about. Um, but, um, oh, and comment, thank you. For, this is a comment from one of our attendees. Your presentation was so full of great information and very relevant, yes. <laughs> thank you. Um, and so if anybody does have any um, questions you still wanna ask of uh, Laura while we're still here, go ahead and get it into your question section. Um, as we said, the slides will be available. Um, you can always contact her later too. The slides, the links to the, the wake that she has put together. Um, she's already sent me the, the slides, so we'll have them up when the recording goes up. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull back presenter control to my screen now so I can show you where all that is. And while we're waiting to see if anybody does any last minute questions, um, we are a little after 11 o'clock Central Time, but that's okay. We you know don't have to cut off. If you guys still wanted to ask questions or talk about anything, uh, feel free to type in there into the questions section. But uh, this is the page. Just get myself. There we go. Are we seeing my screen? There we go. Yes, this is our session page for today's show. Um, if you go to our Encompass Live page, and if you use using your search engine of your choice, type in Encompass Live so far, we're the only thing called that on the internet. Nobody else is allowed to use that name. <laughs> Um, and you will find links to either our main page or our archive page. Um, uh, these are upcoming shows, but our archives will be right here. Um, and their most recent one is at the top of the page here. So today's will be right there at the top. Uh, should be done with it by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest. It usually is how long it takes me to process the GoToWebinar recording, get it up onto YouTube and have all that done. Um, everyone who attended today and registered for today's show will get an email directly from me letting you know when it's ready here. And I said we'll have a link to the recording, a link to the slides. Um, uh, here is, I, just to show you, this is the wakelet that Laura, I typed it in when it was on the screen so you can see all the different links and things that she's got here that will help you jump to all of these different great resources. 
and her website, librarianlar.com. Very easy to get to that too. In our archives here, I'll, um, ooh, oh, we've got some comments coming through. I'm gonna go through these first, actually. Let's, uh, so uh, thank you, this is wonderful. Um, back to the students now, they gotta go back to the students, but thank you for the helpful information, yeah. Um, Oh, and someone else is commenting about something they use too. Yeah, very enjoyable presentation, Susie says. I use library thing a lot for a work project and also personally. I've gotten some free books and I'm hoping to get back to doing reviews more consistently. Yep. Um, yeah, library thing is a, is a great resource. Uh, if you don't know about, I mean, we talked about getting the books. Library thing is a, uh, you kind of have your own online personal online catalog of the books you own. I use it to keep track of my own books. Um, and and then they do also do the you know the give you the review copies if you want to um, have those as well. All right. So um, as far as our archives here, yeah, um, they'll, they'll be posted here. And while we're here, I will show you as you can see here, you can search our show archives, the entire archive, or just the most recent twelve months if you want to. Just find something recent. Um, and we have those uh, those just couple of limiters there because this is, and I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom. This is the full archives of our show. And Compass Live premiered in January 2009, so we do have over 10 years worth of recorded shows and they are all here so um, just do pay attention when you're watching a recorded show to what was the original broadcast date that's what's on here so you know when it actually came out uh, some of our shows will stand the test of time book reviews of course <laughs> certain things but some things may become outdated or services and products may have changed or no longer exist anymore links may be broken we don't I have always the time to go back and fix everything. Um, but we are librarians, we archive things, keep things for historical purposes. As long as we have the internet and um, all of these on YouTube to be hosted for us, we'll keep them up there. Um, but just do pay attention to the broadcast date so you know if something might be old or not. All right, back to our main page. And just some more thank yous, great presentation. <laughs> Um, we do have a Facebook page that I link to for Encompass Live. You can see that over here. Um, or we post reminders about today, a show to log into, uh, speaker information, when our recordings are available from previous shows, um, new things added to the schedule. So do, um, if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Um, we also do post onto Twitter and Instagram. I think that's the only ones we're using so far. And there's always should be the hashtag and comp live uh, for anything that has to do with our show that we've used. So you can keep track of what we're doing there as well. So it uh, doesn't like there's any other questions. So thank you so much, everybody, for attending. Thank you so much, Laura, for joining us for today. This is some great resources. I'm going to go and start using these for myself, maybe. <laughs> thank you. Um, and yeah, next week we're actually going to be talking about doing reviews. Uh, our next week's topic is uh, Friday Reads, Pandemic Reading is the name. Um, here at the Library Commission, we've been doing a Friday Reads um, program uh, for quite a few years, since 2014, it says there, um, where our staff will um, just post their book reviews on our website. And we have them all collected together in one place where you can see them all. Um, so we have uh, some of our staff here will read something or just post about a book they, they're interested in. And we thought we'd do, since we're now a year, I think it was this week when I first started working from home um, yeah. due to the pandemic, um, talk about the, some of the books that we've um, reviewed over the last 12 months. So there's going to be five of us on the show from our staff and just talking about some of the books that we've read over the last year and what we thought about them. So definitely join us to get some, like you're saying, ideas for any books you might want to add to your collection. Awesome. All right. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Laura. I think that will wrap it up for today's show. Hopefully, we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye.